the New Orleans Saints have the 14th overall pick in this draft, and they have a lot of options. I'm going to get into exactly what they are, but before I do, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and also follow on social media, JK Bogan, and let's dive in. So, guys, let's talk about it. Um, the Saints right now have the 14th pick. They have the 45th overall pick in the second round. They don't have a third. They don't have a fourth. They have three, actually four fifth round picks, two sixth and a seventh. Now, I've always thought that if you have that much of a gap in between, say, two to five, you don't have a third or a fourth round. I always thought like trading down at some point to fill that gap made a lot of sense. Now, the Saints here are in an interesting position, and we're going to discuss the biggest needs they have, where I think they should go, and where I think they will go. Um, to start it off, let's talk about the tight end position because there's no running back worth drafting, and you have Alvin Kamara. There's no quarterback worth drafting, in my opinion, and you have Derek Carr. Uh, so at this point, you're talking all the way up to tight end because I like the receivers. I like what you see there. I'm sure you could add somebody, but when they got Cedric Wilson, added him to, um, you know, Shahid and, you know, Olave, I, I don't know if they necessarily need anybody there. I, I kind of feel like, you know, if they add anybody, it would be on day two. I don't see a pressing need there to, you know, go after a receiver um, at this point in the draft. If you trade it up, it's a little different, but let's talk about it. Tight end, Brock Bowers. So there's a chance he would be there. Now, Brock Bowers, I think, is a serious option here because you would literally put him with weapons like Kamara and Olave and Shahid. And I mean, that is that's a lot of, you know, explosive plays. That's a lot of, you know, weapons. I mean, Derek Carr would be in good shape um, with that. Jawan Johnson right now is their starting tight end on their depth chart. They also have Foster Moreau, a little underrated, um, you know, solid backup there. And then Taysom Hill, who's just in his own role. You know, he plays enough where <clears throat> he might not be the starting tight end, but he basically is. He, he's a starting player, you know, can be that trick play guy, and they use him a lot. So those are their top uh, three tight end options. Brock Bowers absolutely is an upgrade over all three. Now, again, Taysom Hill has his own role. So this isn't to say that Taysom Hill no longer exists. But Bowers has an astronomical, in my opinion, he's an astronomical upgrade in the tight end room. Um, he is much better than what they have. And again, to go with Olave, Shahid, and Kamara, I think that'd be a scary bunch. I think offensive coordinator, brand new offensive coordinator, Clint Kubiak, I really think he's going to get his way and this team is going to go offense and they can, if you look at their roster, this is probably the time you can go offense with this roster because the defense looks pretty good. And we'll talk about there are some, you know, positions there, at least one position that I mentioned that you could add uh, from this draft in the first round for defense. But for the most part, I would say offense needs to be addressed. And uh, I'm not the only one that would say that. So with that said, I like Brock Bowers as an option. Another option, if he is available, another option here is offensive tackle. Now, you might not know this because I didn't really know this until I actually did some research. It hasn't really been super public. I don't know why it's not getting talked about. What you'll find is if you go out there and you look up mock drafts or you go out there and, and you try to find any information on the Saints 14th overall pick, you'll find a lot of mocks with them taking Olu Fashionu if he's there, Talis Fuwaga, JC Latham, Troy Fatanu, um, Amarius Mims, even Tyler Guyton. Trevor Penning is currently projected to start at left tackle. He was benched at one point last year, though. But that's not even my concern. My concern is Ryan Ramchick. This sucks because... If you're a football fan like I am, you, you hate to see this. And honestly, if you have a soul, you hate to see anybody battling injuries. Ramchick is a stud, okay? But while he was expected to be the starting right tackle, he has a cartilage defect in his knee. And we found that out last year. Of course, I just found it out. This is It was reported, but it wasn't super loud, right? With that said, Ramchick, right? He has surgery to repair this or to, to fix it or alleviate it or whatever. Everything appears to go perfectly fine. 
in February, right? Things are looking good. He's going to be back. And now it's starting to sound like his knee isn't responding well to the surgery at all, which people may look at that in the short term and see a problem like, oh, he's not going to be ready for the start of the season. I look at that and I say his career is in jeopardy. And I'm not the only one saying that. So you don't have a lot of depth behind those guys. Um, to me, any available offensive tackle would be an upgrade over a, you know, depth piece that fills in for what you currently have on, you know, in Ramchick if he d- can't play, which I don't think he will. And I think any of these tackles at this point in, on the board, you know, if they're there, like a, a fashion new, are upgrades over Penning. I'm not out on Penning. I think you probably have to move him to right tackle or guard, but I'm not out on Penning. But I definitely see the need to draft a tackle. And, you know, I really think with Ramchick's unfortunate injury and unfortunate status, I really think this will end up being the move. But we're not done here. So those are the offensive positions. Tight, uh, tight end and offensive line. Offensive tackle. Defensive line is interesting. And I'm not saying they're going to go defensive line, but Byron Murphy, the second, sitting there. Jerzon Newton is also sitting there. And we don't know how these teams are going to, uh, you know, value these guys, right? I've seen mocks in which Byron Murphy goes in the top 10. I've also seen mocks where he falls to pick 20. You know, we don't really know. What I do know is that I really like Colin Saunders and I like Nathan Shepard. I think they're underrated players. Brian Brissy was great last year down the stretch. Um, This to me would be a best player available pick if they went this route. I don't think they have to go this route, but I wouldn't be shocked nonetheless. I think Saunders... Uh, Shepard and Brissy are fine, right? They're just very, like, Brissy was a first-round pick last year, keep in mind. Um, so I don't really like the idea of giving up on him so quickly. Not that they would be doing that. But I don't know. I don't really see defensive line as a super need. Um, I think this is just more of an upgrade. And the reason I included it is because I've been seeing a lot of it, so I wanted to address it. Um The next option, the last option here, trade up or trade down. So the Saints don't have tons to work with after the second round. There's a big gap between round three and four, right? So I already mentioned that. Um, They do have 2025 picks, which, you know, they could use to move up. They could also move down and get that third round or fourth round pick or both of them uh, and fill in the gaps they have in the draft. So um, a team trading up at this point, I could see, depending, you know, you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers as an option, they could trade up, uh, you know, with the Saints here. They're at 20, so it'd be a six-spot trade. I think you get a, you know, you'd get a third for that. In this, you know, the Steelers trade up and they get an offensive tackle, you know, whether that's Mims, who I think they're going to take if he's there at 20, or they, you know, really want fashion new at this point. Um, you know, if, if that's the thing, with this draft having potentially, and I'm going to say four quarterbacks, there's potentially five quarterbacks going in the top 15. It's going to push a lot of really good talents down the board. And I think really, if you're in this range here, trading is going to make a lot of sense and it is going to be a tough decision to make. You're going to be staring a potential franchise tackle right in the face with a need with uncertainty about right tackle, your franchise right tackle. So it's going to be tough. And you might have to decline because, you know, the opportunity to trade down is too good to pass up. And I think it's very real. I think that's a very real thing. So um, that's my thought on that. I, I think end of the day, they're going offensive tackle. Um, I could see Brock Bowers, but I don't necessarily think he'll be there. He could be there, but I don't see it. I think they're going to go with Olu Fashinu here if he's there. If he's not there, then I think they go with J.C. Latham. Um, The reason being is that, at let's just say Penning is your starting left tackle, okay? If they go with J.C. Latham here, because I don't think Fuaga will necessarily make it, 
Latham in this position, he played right tackle. So did Mims, so did Guyton, all the but like JC Latham at this point is probably the best player available if Fashionu and Fuaga are gone. And so I could really see that. So I think the what they should do is I think they should focus on the trenches. I too think they should take the best tackle available. Um, because also another thing their tackles aren't bad in pass pro, but in the run game, it leaves a lot to be desired. So, um, you know, I, I think that they really need to help in that department. And I think JC Latham would be a perfect pick for that. And if fashion is there, you can't pass on, uh, uh, pass him up either. Um, I'm not going to hate on them if they trade up or trade down. Not at all. I think they're in a good spot to do either. Um, I would say though, you know, getting a guy like Latham, maybe you trade down a little bit and you can get him, but he's somebody that I think is going to go higher than some people realize because a lot of mock drafts have him all over the place. And it seems to me like the NFL, the consensus is that around the league, he's very well liked. Um, there are a lot of teams that are going to be interested in him. I could see him going in the top 15. Um, I could also see him falling, but I think more, more than likely he goes in the top 15. So if I'm the Saints, I'm taking an offensive tackle. And with that said, I think the Saints are taking an offensive tackle. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think the Saints take a tackle? Do you think they trade down? Where do you think they go? Let me know. But until next time, I'm Jake Ellenbogen. You guys take care. Later, folks. Yeah.